Okay, this is Jeff Head again. Uh, here you have a video of the new Type 55 Chinese, what they call large destroyer, what I would call an Aegis-like cruiser uh, that they are building four at a time of. They built the first four. The first one, which is shown right there, the 101, is ready to be commissioned. The 102, 3, and 4, I believe, and maybe 5, will all commission uh, probably this year. They're already building the second batch of 4. Similar to what the U.S. did with the Aegis vessels, the United States built 26 Aegis Ticonderoga cruisers in just about 10 years and commissioned them all the last being the Port Royal commissioned in 1994. Well, the Chinese are doing the same. The major difference here is these are brand new, brand spanking new. And so you've got a 30 to 40 year lifespan of these vessels. We'll have to see uh, what, the, what the Chinese do with them. They have a total of 112 vertical launch missile cells 64 up front, 48 not totally in the aft, but in the mid-aft region of the aft portion of the ship, but uh, almost in the middle. Now, we're told, although we haven't seen it demonstrated, that these cells can shoot a number of weapons just like the United States. I have no doubt that they can shoot uh, their anti-aircraft long-range missiles. I have no doubt that they can shoot uh, anti-surface missiles. And I have no doubt that they can shoot anti-submarine missiles, which the United States also shoots. Whether they can quad-pack these with medium-range, say 50-mile range missiles or not, we don't know. Um, I can bet that they're trying to get that done. But they have put these out and uh, they are very, very strong and very new and very capable. Another important consideration for these missiles, differing from other Chinese vessels, even their other modern Aegis-like missiles, is that they have a hangar that will carry two of these Z-18 uh, large helicopters. So these helicopters in their anti-submarine configuration can carry, I believe, four anti-submarine uh, torpedoes. And that's an important consideration because they have long range, longer than the Seahawk, uh, which the U.S. carries two of on their uh, Ticonderoga cruisers but a much heavier payload. They also have, and I've put on both of these ships, the Z-18 um, AEW uh, version. You can see folded up under the rear a aperture radar on both of these uh, helicopters that allow them to perform AEW work and that is uh, an important consideration. However, it's a helicopter, so its range and its altitude are limited and not nearly, you know, as powerful as the E-2D Advanced Hawkeye that the United States would have flying off of its uh, aircraft carriers. But they do have this capability, and uh, these ships uh, can carry that type of helicopter. Much more likely that they'll be carrying two anti-submarine helicopters in my estimation because having two helicopters that can attack submarines on a single vessel is critical. Uh, it allows the ship to continue to work uh, a target without having to give it up and, and very likely lose it if an aircraft has to go in to refuel uh, while you're waiting for another aircraft 
uh, to come out either from another ship or from the single ship that provided it. Well, these ships completely overcome that. Other important considerations are, these are large APARs. The aperture radar panels here are larger than the radar panels on the Ticonderoga cruiser. Now, whether they are as uh, capable and as advanced as the United States, of course the Chinese will tell you that they are. Now, we don't know because we don't get to look at and go through tests that they perform, uh, which the United States makes available uh, to pretty much anyone. We want them to know what we're capable of so they will be deterred from messing with us, so to speak. The other thing is these ships are large. They, uh, they displace 12 to 13,000, maybe even more, maybe 13 and a half thousand tons. They've got 112 missiles in vertical launch, but they also have 24 missiles, HQ-10 missiles in this rear uh, launcher over the hangar. Uh, looks very much like a ram launcher and acts like a ram launcher. And so, uh, rather than 21 missiles like the U.S. carries, they carry 24. And that is an important close-in weapon uh, for these ships. Also, the Chinese claim, and I believe that they have developed a system that makes good on that claim, that like the Ticonderoga cruiser, this ship is capable of being in charge of the battle defense of a carrier strike group or an amphibious group. Whether they have cooperative engagement to the, 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 uh, the scale that the United States has is unknown, but we have to believe that they are working at it. So if they don't have it, they're trying to get it as quickly as they can and uh, certainly use all of those new Type 52 D destroyers that are like very similar to Aegis Flight 2A Burke destroyers. The difference there being that they only carry 64 missiles instead of 96. And so again, we're faced with the question uh, as to whether China is weak on the micronization. And so they can't get it any smaller than that. Or do they have all the types of missiles that the United States carries? I doubt they do, uh, but I do think they have enough to make them very significant and very important potential aggressors that the United States must not take for granted. These ships are coming out. We expect them to probably build at least 16, if not 24 of these vessels. We know that they are planning to build five and probably six aircraft carriers. They have two built, the second probably to be commissioned within the next 10 to 12 months. The third carrier probably to be launched in the next two to three years. That carrier will not be a stow bar carrier, meaning it won't have a ski jump launch. It will be a catapult launch carrier, whether it's steam or electromagnetic, like the U.S. Ford class is, we don't know yet. Either way, you can bet, and we have seen the K-600 uh, aircraft that the Chinese have developed, which looks very much like the E-2C uh, AEW aircraft. So they're going to up their game, and they're going to have a much more powerful aircraft carrier soon in terms of their ability to defend it. And uh, they will control that defense with ships like this, that are very powerful and very capable with good designs. You can see there aren't uh, many right angles on this ship, so the stealth capabilities of these ships uh, has to be fairly strong in terms of radar. <clears throat> How tight they are on their electronic communications, we don't know and won't know until they get out there and we get around them and test them which you can bet will happen. In the meantime, the Chinese are building them rapidly. And here in the last 
oh, 10 years, they've, they've caught up maybe 20 years to what they used to be in terms of their capabilities compared to the United States. Uh, I believe the United States is still somewhat ahead of them, but they're closing the gap rapidly. And uh, this vessel, these types of vessels, prove it, you know, uh, for anyone who has eyes to see. So this is the Type 55 large destroyer. I call it a cruiser because it's even bigger than the Ticonderoga cruiser in terms of its tonnage. And when you take the 24 missiles into consideration on the after uh, launcher for the HQ-10 missiles, it happens to have 136 total missiles, which is the same number of missiles the United States Ticonderoga cruisers have when you take into account their eight additional anti-surface missiles on the after portion of the Ticonderoga. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to split these apart here and I'm going to put a Ticonderoga cruiser in the middle of these ships so that you can see what the Ticonderoga uh, cruiser looks like when compared to these new vessels that the Chinese are building. And there you have it. There you have a Ticonderoga class vessel. That is the latest, the newest Ticonderoga commissioned in 1994, upgraded numerous times since, so it has the latest Aegis, the latest missile capability, the latest EM, ECM capability. Uh, you can see that it is not as uh, stealthily designed in terms of uh, pure radar reflection. It's very strong in terms of electronics. But there it is. The United States has 22 of those ships. The Chinese have four of these ships launched and another four building. And we expect them to continue to do that for the next number of years. So that is the way these two ships, ship classes look with respect to each other. Again, the U.S. has two helicopters that fit into this hangar near the back, 64 missiles there, 64 missiles there, 8 missiles there, 136 missiles altogether, which is the same number the Chinese carry on these new vessels of theirs. Let me remove the U.S. Uh, Ticonderoga class vessel now and set it aside. Falling on each other or something like that. And I'll close off with that. This is the new Type 55 Chinese large destroyer, 13,000 tons, I would say, oh yes. But I believe they are more adequately uh, classed as a cruiser and are capable of it and are armed to do it. And uh, the Chinese are going to build. Uh, somewhere in the vicinity of 16 to 24 of these vessels and uh, they are very strong uh, combatants. So there you have it. This is Jeff Head. Uh, look for my Ticonderoga uh, video out there where I have a whole video specifically for them. And uh, as always, God's blessings to you and uh, please tell others about my uh, channel and Take a look. We've got entire groups, carrier strike groups from most nations, amphibious assault groups, uh, all in one 350 scale. By the way, these are both one 350 scale made by Bronco models, and uh, we got them from China. Uh, they're not selling over here yet. I expect they will soon, but as soon as I could, I got a hold of them from China. So that's it. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.